Senator Tom Cotton is a Trump surrogate and joins us now. Senator, your reaction to the verdict and what, uh, what Michael Cohen's assessment was. was. Brian, yesterday was a sad day for America. Uh, you had a partisan witch hunt in New York with the prosecutor who'd campaigned on getting Trump for any charge. You had a judge who literally was a Biden donor. He rigged every ruling uh, against President Trump. The Democrats rushed this case to trial because they knew it was the only trial that would happen before the election. But I think President Trump put it well. The real verdict is going to come on November 5th from the American people. And they're gonna base that verdict on runaway inflation and our wide open border that has had 15 million illegals cross it, or the war and chaos that Joe Biden has helped unleash around the world. Those are the reasons why Joe Biden and the Democrats rushed this case to trial, because they know President Biden is a weak, failed leader, and they can only hope to win by weaponizing the legal system to engage in election interference mm -hmm. against President Trump, but right. the American people see straight through it. I mean, you got a degree from, uh, I think it was Harvard. Uh, you have a law degree as well as fighting in the infantry, a uh, sitting senator, a former congressman. You got great experience. Then there's two big dates coming up. There's gonna be the uh, end of June debate, and then you got the July 11th sentencing. First off, will you be helping the former president get ready for his debate with Joe Biden? Well, I'll help President Trump and the campaign in any way they ask, in any way I can, just like I'll help Republicans win the Congress, because I think the way we help solve the American people's problems and repair the damage that Joe Biden has inflicted on the country is to elect President Trump to a second term and elect right. Republicans to the Congress. Regarding the date, I think it's just another example of the election interference you're seeing from the Democrats right. in this case. They rushed this partisan witch hunt to trial because they knew none of the other cases against President Trump, equally flawed, would get to trial before the election. Right. And now they're going to have a sentencing hearing four days before we begin the Republican National Convention and President Trump accepts the nomination. Once again, this partisan judge who is literally a Joe Biden donor is rigging the process to try to help elect Joe Biden. But again, the American people see straight through it. So, Senator, you got a call uh, when the George Floyd riots were raging. They basically said, how would you handle it? And you said send in the troops. Uh, and by the way, the, foreign, the current president says it was peaceful, the George Floyd riots. Uh, I don't know what country he was in at the time. And you wrote this op-ed. Did you have any idea the ripple effects it caused? Because now Nellie Bowles got this brand new book out, and it's uh, a bestseller. She was at the New York Times, along with Barry Weiss, uh, at the New York Times, both left when she was told to condemn the editors that allowed you to write this horrible op-ed about using your thing called your opinion. And here's an excerpt from that book. I wasn't going to tweet the tweet we all had to tweet that day. And that was really the final moment for me in the moment within the paper that to them was picking a side. And we all had to raise our voices together and try to get the editors fired. And I just wasn't willing to do that. I lost friends immediately. Anyone who didn't post that was seen as very suspicious from that day onward. And that's Nellie Bols, uh, someone who's not a Republican, but talked about that. What is your reaction to your editorial and the ripple effects? Well, Brian, it's really just another example of the kind of Stalinist tactics the left uses today in America, like we've seen on the trial in, in New York. I, I knew that New York Times readers would respond negatively to my op-ed. That's one of the reasons why I published it there. I thought they needed to hear it. And obviously, the writers and the staff there reacted negatively. What we didn't know is that they also tried to silence and, and cancel anyone at the New York Times who didn't engage in the same kind of attacks on me. Uh, it really is like what you see with President Trump in New York with this judge, for instance, imposing a gag order on him in the middle of a presidential campaign so he can't go out and campaign. You see the same thing inside the New York Times. If you didn't affirmatively go out and condemn my op-ed, they tried to cancel you and get you fired. Those are the kind of Stalinist tactics that the Democratic Party and right. Joe Biden has used in weaponizing the legal system against not just President Trump, but against Republicans or conservatives of all stripes. And and the one thing is, like, Nellie Bowles, uh, she now tends to go more towards the middle. Barry Weiss, more towards the middle. Uh, you look at uh, Bill Maher, more towards the middle because of the way the left has acted. And uh, Yuri Berliner, with NPR, fired because he thought they were going too far left. It's amazing, Senator, and you were the first. Little did you know when you, asked, when you wrote that uh, editorial, the ripple effects. Senator, thanks so much. I appreciate it.
Thank you, Brian. All right.